listen to this uh, audio clip between Kenneth Copeland and Paul and Jan Crouch. Does God use faith? Surely. Now, now see, here's a sore spot. There are those not with who him. say. Not with, not, not with you. No, no, no. <laughs> not with God. I'm not, in fact, I'm not sore at God at all, and I don't think he's sore at me. I don't know. I haven't done anything to him. No, but the, the critics say God is God. He doesn't have to have faith. He doesn't exercise faith. He doesn't use faith. He's God. He's the object of faith. Oh, wait a minute, what does that mean? Oh, I don't know what that means. I don't either. Um, objection! Did you catch that? Uh, Kenneth Copeland said, now wait a minute, what does that mean, God is the object of our faith? I don't know what that means. And then you hear Jan Crouch say, well, I don't either. Friends, that's stunning. The fact that God is the object of our faith I mean, that's first grade Sunday school stuff. You don't get more basic than that. That's Christianity 101. I mean, that's ground level. And, and here's Kenneth Copeland, who says that he doesn't understand what it means to say that God is the object of our faith. Because you see, in the prosperity gospel, God is not the object of faith. Faith is the object of faith. You see, in the prosperity gospel, faith is not placed in God. Faith is a force that you direct at God to make him do what you want him to do. And it's really ironic when you think about it that these people who call themselves faith preachers don't even understand what faith is. They do not even understand what faith is. And again, unless you're thinking, oh, well, this is just an isolated statement, they don't really teach that you're really supposed to have faith in your faith. They, surely they don't teach that. Yeah, actually they do. Take this that! from Jesse Duplantis. Jesse Duplantis writes in his magazine last year, he says, the Bible says that every man has been given the measure of faith. Have faith in your faith, not faith in God, have faith in your faith and step over into the faith zone. Whatever that is. How powerful are our words? Well, so powerful that uh, we can even control the weather. Watch this from Gloria Copeland. You know, you're the you're supposed to control the weather. I mean, Ken's the primary weatherman at our house, but when he's not there, I do it. You can see what's happening out there. It shows just like they have on at the weather, like on the news. I mean, he's got the computers, got the current weather on it, and all that for flying. So uh, sometimes I'll hear something. I'll hear the thunder start. Maybe he'll still be asleep. And I'll say, Ken, you need to do something about this. And knowing that. But you are the one that has authority over the weather. One day, Ken and Pat Boone, well, we were in Hawaii at their house. And we were, they were sitting outside. And there was a weather spout out over the ocean. And that's like a tornado, except it hits the water. And so they were sitting there and they just watched it, rebuked it, and never did anything. One day, I was in the airplane in the back and my little brother was in the back with me and Ken was up front flying. And we were not in the weather because we don't fly bad weather, but we, we could see the weather over here. And I looked out the window and that tornado came down just like this, down toward the ground. And Ken said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get back up there. So this is how I learned how to talk to tornadoes. I saw this. And that tornado went woo, 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 woo. Even while I was watching it, my little brother was not a devout Christian at that time, and that was really good for him to see. So you're the weatherman. You get out there, or the weather woman, whichever it is, and you talk to that thing, and you tell it you're not coming here. I command you to dissipate, and you get back up there in Jesus' name. Glory to God. That, that, I won't charge you extra. Hold it! Now that is so absurd, it really doesn't even need a comment, but uh, if you will indulge me, I'll offer a, a couple of brief ones. The first thing, did you notice how uh, Gloria Copeland says that we can control the weather, but we don't fly in bad weather? Why not? I mean, if you can control the weather, fly through whatever you want to fly through. 
You know, honestly, just a little common sense goes a long way in clearing a lot of this stuff up. But aside from that, if it is true, and that's a huge if, but if it is true that Gloria Copeland can control the weather, and it's not just Gloria Copeland, Creflo Dollar says he can do it, Rod Parsley says he can do it, Jesse Duplantis says he can do it, they all claim to be able to control the weather. If they can control the weather, then I would submit to you that these prosperity preachers should be charged with thousands of cases of negligent homicide Take that! each and every year. Because every year all around the world there are thousands of people who are killed in weather-related disasters. Floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, typhoons, whatever you call them, uh, uh, droughts, thousands of people. So if they can control the weather, but just choose not to do it, then they should be charged with negligent homicide, thousands of cases. But you know, I'm not really that hard-nosed. I don't really believe that the prosperity preacher should actually be charged with thousands of cases of negligent homicide because they can't do what they claim they can do. They can't control the weather any more than you and I can. There is only one who is in control of the weather. And it's not any of these clowns. Take that!